Okay, it should be live on LinkedIn. Um, so hello to everybody if you're joining us. We are going out live on LinkedIn for the first time. So hopefully this is going to work for everyone to be able to see and hear us. Um, and this, again, our first time doing it. So bear with us as we figure it all out from the tech side of things. Um, but yes, okay, I just got the notification that we're live on LinkedIn. So wonderful. So this is being recorded. Um, and if you need the recording afterwards, you can always let us know. But I'm so excited because today I am joined by the great Sean Williams. <laughs> Thanks for coming and joining me today, yeah, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, we got we had some technical difficulties. And can you tell us just a little bit about oh, there might be a little bit of a delay too. So hopefully that will even out here in a second. Oh, but um, we wanted to talk today about your website, which is just amazing. And I'm going to go ahead and share it on my screen here um, in one second. And when I first saw your website, I have to say, I was laughing out loud in my office when I, especially when I was reading your bio page. And okay. that, you know, I have to be honest, that just does not happen usually in our industry when you yeah, read your website. So it was such a breath of fresh air. And it's so fun. So uh, maybe first just start by telling us, um, you know, a little bit about high level about you and your business and um, also what made you know it was time to redo your website. Uh, yeah, so quick background. I worked in the insurance broker dealer world for uh, about eight years and, uh, and then made a switch to an RIA out of Tampa with some friends that I knew and ultimately decided it was the right time to branch out on our own to, to have the messaging and um, and the approach with clients that we wanted to have. And yes, when we decided it was time to redo the website, we didn't actually redo it because there wasn't one. So it was, it was just making one. And um, <laughs> so we started on March 1st and the idea was to have the website live and functional by then, but uh, we weren't quite there. Yep. And, and I actually blame you on that, Samantha, because oh. <laughs> we were, no, it's, it's a good reason. We, we okay. were working with a, a developer that I had been referred to and uh, in creating all of this. And then I saw a webinar that you did probably back in February uh, where you took advisors websites and you let them volunteer and you went through and gave them some feedback and opened it up for critique. And I learned a lot. And so we put the other developer on hold. They made a landing page for us that had some functionality for a bit. And then we started working with FMG from that point on. And, and it's been great. Oh, well, that actually makes my heart sing. So thank you. Yeah. I, I, I'm happy to hear that. And I yeah. have to say, we just got a comment on LinkedIn from Daniel Benfield, who said, this dude is a legend. So I don't know if you know Daniel. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Daniel. You got a, you got a fan. So I'm going to go ahead and share your site so everyone can see and we can look through it together. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Okay. So let's just kind of walk through a few things. Number one, the copy on your site is so good. Did you write it all? Believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I've got a, a creative bug that every once in a while I have to scratch and this took up a lot of that time. So uh, yeah, every bit of it. Now, now I satisfy that creative itch with doing uh, funny videos that probably no one watches. <laughs> we will we'll take a look at those too. But you know, even this, like I need a plan that doesn't require a PhD. Like it's just so well written and you know, you really nailed what I always tell people is people don't read a website like they read a book, right? They don't start in the top left corner and read every single line. They scroll and they scan until something catches their eye. So I love the way You've made it really, really easy to scroll. You've got a good mix of visuals and really big, um, you know, easy to digest copy. But, you know, even like when we come over to this business owner section, um, running a business is hard. Doing it on your own is even harder. And then like this one, I laugh so hard, attracting and keeping talent. You like your employees. So does your competitor. <laughs> so It's so good. So tell us a little bit about your process for writing it. Uh, well, Believe it or not, the process came almost directly from the book called Building a Story Brand. I think I think it was featured on uh, Libby Grywe's podcast, uh, okay. The Advisor. Um, but it's all about how 
every successful story, whether it's a movie or a book or a marketing campaign or a website, they all follow the exact same formula. And it's, it's not groundbreaking. It's, uh, and he lays it out for you how to do the formula. It's you have a character, that character has a problem. They meet a guide who has a solution, uh, who calls them to action and it ends in either success or helps them avoid failure. And ultimately they have a transformation. They go from something to something. And, mm -hmm. and that's, we just followed the, the, uh, the guide, um, the, the story brand model for building it out and focused on the client, uh, I think is the key. If, if you go to, and you pointed this out too, if you go to a hundred websites in our industry or any industry, you know, 90% of them, maybe even more, the focus is on how great we are. It's yeah. our team, our process, uh, our mission, our values. And, um, and it's missing the point that the hero of this story is the client. It's never us. And, and so I love that even in something as simple as your life, your guide, your solution. One of the things I really challenge people to do is to go to their own website and look at the language they're using and how often are they saying I or we or my, yeah. and how often are they saying you and making the focus on the other person? Because, you know, nobody really cares what you can do. They care what you can do for them. So yeah. I love the way that you've done that. And Susan Theater is on and she said in the chat, love this. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. If you're here, let us know in the chat. We can see all your comments. Um, if you like anything you're seeing, let us know. It will make Sean feel good, I'm sure, to hear from you. Oh, yeah. You. Always made a good ego boost. Yeah, we could all always. So let's talk a little bit about this page, though. One of the things that I just love about your Meet Your Guides page was that when we look at most people's bios, and not just in our industry, honestly, but across all industries, we want, we're, you know, the whole point of the bio page is we are wanting to make a connection with someone. Yet yeah. we write it as if it's an obituary instead of a bio, right? Like Samantha Russell graduated from Miami University of Ohio. And she went on to do this. And it, it sounds like I'm gone and we're talking about me versus um, making it conversational and engaging and writing it in first person. So I'm always telling people write in first person, but it can be kind of hard to do that and feel a little awkward. So the first thing is I love that you have this Cliff Notes bio, super yes. dad, bald, <laughs> marine, moderately yeah. intelligent. You know, that's so fun. And then you click on the full bio and, you know, you've got obviously all of your different, you know, accolades. But then the way that you were able to write in first person in a way that doesn't just come across as I do this, I do that was almost like an interview. So tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea for this page. Uh, so I, I was told a long time ago, if you, if you take from one source, it's called plagiarism, but if you take from a lot of different sources, it's called re, uh, research. And so we just did a lot of research. Yeah. We, we found what we liked from other, uh, other websites, not just in the advisor industry, but, uh, a lot of places. And we tried to mimic that as much as possible and, um, self-deprecating humor, uh, builds a connection more quickly than a lot of other things. So we, we made fun of ourselves a little bit. Um, but we tried to have our personalities come out in a lot of this stuff. That's why we have the silly skills section. I love Halloween decorations and, <laughs> and building tree houses. And uh, so it was just a lot of fun. And it was, we built it like an interview. Like what would, if someone else were asking us these questions, how would we answer? Right. The fact that the Halloween decorations is the one that goes all the way to the right more than yeah, you. Right. I think that just made me laugh so hard. Um, so you're the person at your house that's putting up all the obnoxious skeletons and oh, yeah. yeah every week we have skeletons that are in a different movie pose and people try oh, to get movie. how fun that's so 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 fun well you're gonna have to take some pictures of that and use it in a social media post i think um okay. amy galley just said love that you use guides instead of like your team that was super creative and relatable and i agree and it goes so nicely with that homepage image of the woman taking a hike um it just all flows together really really well so somebody might be looking at you know some of the things you're doing and saying i'm not as creative as sean you know when it comes to this kind of thing what guidance would you give someone who says something like that uh well first of all i'd, I'd start with reading that book building a story brand um i wish i got some uh some kickbacks for that but it was phenomenal and it lays out specifically the steps that you should follow in creating a good story that's what you want to have as a, a good story 
and the website as well. You can it asks you questions and you plug in information. Who is your audience? What problem do they have? Uh, and it almost writes itself if you just answer the prompts and follow along. Maybe not as creatively or as as humorously, but um, that that's a, a good starting place, I would say. Yeah. So somebody, you know, who maybe has been in our industry a long time and they're trying to attract business owners. I get this kind of pushback, right? So you have obviously business owners is one of the the target audiences for you because you have a whole page for it. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about working with business owners. Have you ever thought like, oh, no, we shouldn't use humor or make fun of ourselves because we want to attract business owners. We have to be more buttoned up and professional because I yeah. get that kind of pushback sometimes. Yeah, that and uh, retirees, someone who's a little bit older and you would you, you put them in a category of, hey, they're more professional if you joke around and they're not going to want to do things with you. And, and I I consulted with a lot of my uh, colleagues about this before we went this strategy. And ultimately, I came to the conclusion that authenticity is a lot more powerful than trying to be something I'm not. And this is yep. my this is my personality coming through. If someone doesn't want to work with me because um, I might joke around a little bit more or uh, the website isn't, you know, a lot of uh, people shaking hands in a glass office and uh, that city skylines in the background. If someone doesn't want to work with us because of that, then they're probably not someone we want to work with anyway. Uh, and I think that's actually in the FAQ. One of the questions is what happens if we don't like you? And I think the answer or the response is it's probably mutual or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's so true. I think, you know, there's such a tendency to be so scared to turn anyone away. I always say, though, you know, if we want to attract anyone, if you think of a magnet, we know a magnet is broken if both sides don't work. You have to repel in order to attract. Yeah. And people get so scared of repelling anyone that they end up attracting no one because they end up being bland and boring. And we just have such a pervasive problem of boring in this industry. And yeah. that is why, you know, I think when you see something like this that just completely goes outside the norm, it's such a breath of fresh air, but it doesn't have to be this way. More people can be their authentic self. And as we see, you know, the rise of AI, the commoditization of so many of these services, people are choosing the advisor for that relationship. Like they want to choose someone that they want to hang out with, that they feel comfortable talking about their finances with. And so you're doing such a great job of, you know, creating that conversation that would happen offline joking around in the office yeah. Yeah. online, and and so talk to me a little bit about that now that you've rolled this site out i mean it's obviously still very early days have you gotten any feedback from anyone yeah um it's probably mostly friends and family that it's like my mom and all of her friends are like hey this is hilarious we love it um joking aside yeah the, the people love the bio section they they like how it's easy to understand um, and it's it feels very approachable. And so that's yeah. most of the feedback we've gotten. No one has ever once said, you're not being serious enough. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's positive. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about this solutions page. There was a great Bank of New York Mellon um, Pershing study a couple of years ago where they talked about advisor value propositions and they okay. interviewed high net worth clients and they looked at what words or phrases are they drawn to over others? And so, for instance, a lot of people liked comprehensive planning versus holistic. Yeah. Um, but one of the ones was that was just mind blowing to me was solutions versus services. People were, I think it was like 60% to uh, 39%. People were saying, we like the word solutions and we're more drawn to that and have a positive association with it than okay. services. And I think it makes sense, right? Like most people hire an advisor when there's a pain point in their life that becomes too big yeah. to ignore and they need a solution to that problem. And so having a solutions page and just calling it that is such a easy fix or easy you know, thing to adjust for. Um, and I love that you did that there. Well, thank you. But then on this page, you know, one of the things we've been telling advisors for a while is don't be afraid to not only list out the services you offer, but what it costs for them. And, and so many people still don't list their fees. So you not only do it, but you do it in such a fun way where, you know, you don't just call it the normal things, but like, don't tip the IRS. <laughs> just, yeah. um, talk to me a little bit about this. Was there ever any concern for you in listing your fees? Did you always know you wanted to do that? 
Um, I think probably initially just because that's how we're all brought up in this industry is don't talk about your fees. Uh, you wait till the end for that. You might scare someone away. Um, and I think it was probably Matthew Jarvis who talks about the transparency of uh, list, list out what it, your services cost. If you drive someone away, that's someone you didn't want to work with to begin with. Um, but we're going to be very transparent with that. We're, it, we charge for the subscription monthly. And um, every time we meet with someone each quarter, we're going to, the first thing we're going to bring up is, hey, we charged you $600 the last quarter. Are you getting $600 worth of value? Um, and if you are, then we'll air high five and, and keep working. If not, we got to figure out how we can start delivering more value to you. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Or you stop paying us. That's the other solution. You're not locked in anything. Just stop paying us. So maybe if you're here and you're listening in and you want to let us know in the comments if you have any questions about this, because I do know this is something a lot of people wonder about. Or if there's anything you see on um, Sean's site, he's been willing to be an open book. So if you have a question about the design or how he came up with anything or choices he made, please feel free to put it in the comments. But one thing I did want to ask you about was you obviously have done such a good job, you know, condensing information. There's a lot of information here, but... You know, we always say you don't want more than five main pages on your website. You've got those five laid out here really nicely. And then you don't ever have more than three child pages under underneath the parent page. But it can be really overwhelming when you're first, you hire, you know, FMG, let's say, and you say, yeah. okay, I'm going to work with you to design my website. How did you, you know, for people listening in who maybe are thinking about creating a new site, how did you go about um, categorizing what you needed to do first so that it would be cohesive and easy to flow through when it came time to put it into the design? Uh, you, you're probably going to hate me, but it's the that story brand example. It's just following the guide and, and creating the story. Even the layout at the top, it, it follows that narrative of you have the character, the, the your life pages. They have a problem. If you click on any of those characters, it takes you to a page discussing their problems and the results that they achieved by by working with us um and then it has the guides and the solution so it it all oh, mirrors. i just clicked on that raising or i'm sorry the young professionals yeah one um oh okay so yes i didn't i don't think i realized those were clickable until right now I, I didn't oh, yeah. them before so this is this is so you even give them like a, a full scenario of kind of where they are and what challenges yeah. instead of saying who here's who we work with it's just it's painting that picture um but describing that person without saying our clients or here's who we work with and then yeah. talking about the challenges they have and the results that they achieve so um somebody said this transparency is refreshing aubrey seymour so thank you aubrey for that um riley masterson is asking and maybe this is something sean that you considered or not he said yeah. what were your thoughts on stock photos when you were looking through photos to use, how much to use maybe photos of yourself or your team versus photos that you could find that were stock photos. And and I'll give my opinion yeah. to you. I'd love to hear how you kind of decided. Yeah. Well, you you gave us a lot, or you gave me a lot of praise for that initial picture with the lady on the mountain hiking. And that was just the default picture. It just happens to work out. So way to go, FMG developer, <laughs> Parker Allstad and his team. Um, and all these other stock photos, they're from Canva, I think. Or okay. Adobe. Adobe, um, but it, it just tried to find one that reflected the scenario uh, for each of those. Yeah, and I think that that's, um, you know, obviously if you're working with our team at FMG, that is something we can 100% help you with is choosing photos that, you know, don't come across as cheesy. It's not just a piggy bank, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. right? So that it really, really goes with the flow of the website. There are so many great options for free stock photos out there, or you can obviously have paid ones as well. But um, I wouldn't say you have to be afraid of stock photos. It's just choosing the right photo. And if you have a good designer working with you, they can certainly help you find one that that works well. Um, and obviously, I'm looking over here for under the your guide section, you guys have your team member photos. Um, were you ever considering like those oh, are actually really? just stock photos that we found of people that look just like? <laughs> <that>. so, <laughs> Do you have? Did you ever consider like we need to have a picture of all three? But I don't even know if you're all in the same location. Actually, I should have asked that. Oh yeah, we are um, okay. remotely some of the time, but we all live in the general area. Okay. Yeah. So some people will say we want to just use photos of our team, and I think that that's fine if that's the background that you're going for and the look and feel. 
the main thing is being cohesive. So yours, yeah. you have that picture of the hike, you have the idea of the guide guiding you along the way. So the theme is being carried out. And in this situation, you're not going to go on a hike and have a professional photographer follow you around, Sean, I don't think. Probably not, no. So it works better to use stock photos. Okay, Mark Hederman is saying, do you feel there is a need to offer three service propositions? Is it hard to implement and then track what clients should be receiving as per their service level and fee? I guess this question's for you, Sean. Yeah, um, unless you want to answer it, I can let no, you No, I think that's I think yeah. that one's great. Yeah. I'll take that one then. Um, this is, Mark, it's kind of a work in progress. Uh, the, the idea was to have three different models and it and it goes to, uh, if you ever, if you're purchasing a comparison between any services, the idea behind that is they're all laid out just like this, so people can see exactly what they get at each level. Um, to date, we've never had anyone do the quick start. So I would imagine we're probably gonna take that off at some point uh, if no one engages in that, in that and just focus on the other two. And it's, it's a lot easier than it's either you're either a business or you're not a business. If you're the business side, it, you get the, the extra stuff at the bottom. If you're not, you just get everything else. And actually, you know, there's something interesting in um, marketing, the psychology of choice and pricing. There's a lot that goes into it and having three options and having one be sort of the anchor that people then judge the other two against really can work well. So oh. even if everybody's choosing the quick start, having yeah. it there to see the difference in value, right? is a great marketing um, tactic as well. So well, we definitely did it on purpose then. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You definitely, definitely did it on purpose. 100%. <laughs> I love that. What were some maybe challenges or do, is there anything that you did that didn't go well or maybe you, in hindsight, you could share with other people on the call that you wish you would have done differently when it came to writing or designing or working with a designer on the website? Uh, initially, I wish we would have found FMG sooner, um, which was <laughs> one of the challenges. Yeah, plug you there. Uh, but in all seriousness, it, because before I was doing everything and just having someone create it, and with FMG, they did a lot of um, a lot of the work that I was doing before, so I could just focus on the message that we were trying to tell. Yep. Uh, there were a couple of things that they had to send off to developers to get, like that floating services to where it always stays with you, uh, even when you scroll down or. Yep like the bios page, the way we wanted it to look. Um, so they had to send a couple of things out and, um, but there weren't a lot of challenges in that. It, we knew the message we wanted to convey and uh, and the story we wanted to tell and, and you all helped us build it out. And when you say that, just so everyone's clear, um, you know, you have a designer that's working with you. And if there's certain things that kind of go above and beyond the normal way we would design the site that has to go into the code, we send it to somebody else within FMG who hard codes it. So it's still within our team. It's just not the main point person that you would normally be working with, but it turned out so good. And, you know, I just even love like all the icons that were created for, you know, all these different scenarios and you made it clickable. I mean, one of the things for anybody listening in to really think about is look at how little text is actually on this page you have to click to you know, read more of the text instead of having it all on one big page and you're scrolling. That makes it much more interactive and it allows people to only be looking at the elements or the sections that they're interested in. Yeah. And so from a user experience perspective, it's so much better. So again, doing things like having five main pages at the top, not having more than three child pages under a parent page, um, making the site really easy to scan by using columns and large text, um, big graphics, big images. Those are all things that are just going to make for a much better user experience um, when someone is visiting your website. The last thing I wanted to talk about was your call to action schedule a call. Um, if you click on it, it just takes somebody to your, you know, your Calendly. And you yeah. said this is your first time doing a website where did you ever have any hesitation about that? Because I still get pushback from people sometimes who get stressed about allowing just anyone to book on their calendar. Uh, no, no hesitation about that. The only thing that I would change and we're actually working on it with the in-house developers now is I don't want it to go to a separate page. I just want it to be a pop-up on that page yep. to keep people there, but, and be able to select between either meeting with me or Nick. So we're currently trying to fix that now, Yep. Um, but it's a little nitpicky thing. Um, and, and no, there's no hesitation about that. Um, I don't know that we've had any just someone who found the the website on their own and scheduled an appointment, we will send clients there and say, hey, go to the website, you can schedule an appointment, or we can just send them an email or 
talking to to people out in at an event or something to say go to the website you can schedule an appointment with us there um, and that's worked really well okay yeah we, i mean we list out the times that we want to meet if we're not meeting people during a time then we won't list it right right and the nice thing with the calendly is on the back end of calendly or whatever you know app you're using you can set it up to decide which dates you're going to take those yeah. calls and if you see somebody like let's say a wholesaler books and you're like i don't want to meet with the wholesaler this is for clients you can just cancel the meeting and, and let them know that. So yeah. it's not difficult. So I'm just going to go back to your um, homepage here. So if anybody wants to, again, check out the site itself, it's uh, Cadence Wealth Partners. Um, and it's just so good. I love everything about it. There was a question Thank from you. a LinkedIn user. It looks like they're anonymous saying, um, is there an FMG package you use? And how much approximately was the cost? Uh, yes, is the answer to the first question. I don't know which package, and I, uh, it was a it was a few thousand dollars for the startup, and then there's an ongoing monthly service. But that's because they do the the marketing and some of the other things. I just maybe you know the packages better than I do. Yeah, no, I don't know which package you had, but if you get yeah. um, you know one of our again of our premium websites, it's a few thousand dollars. I think just around three thousand. Um, I should look that up on the pricing page before we started. Yeah. And depending on if you add certain custom elements um you may have to pay for a few of those but uh it's a great deal versus if you go and try to hire a developer yeah. to do it you very quickly if you get quotes from both will realize it is a, a fantastic deal and you know one of the things that we're so passionate about is making the site uniquely yours so working with people to say we know what is going to resonate best with the end client in, in terms of user experience and design, but we also want it to reflect you. One of the things with design I find sometimes people get wrong is they just want themselves to like it. Like, I want to like it. Well, yes, you want to like it, but it's really not about whether you like it. It's that will yeah. the end person visiting it, will it speak to them and will it you know, resonate with that. That's the main thing that we're focused on. Um, and so our team obviously focuses on that. And then the monthly fee, just for the person asking, and I'm sorry, I can't see your name. Um, it the, the way the monthly fee works is you can just have a website with us or you can have just our marketing suite products or you can combine both. And if you use our marketing tools, then you get, you know, emails you can send out automatically that our team will write on your behalf to your prospects and clients. Because so many of you, don't know what to say next week in a, in a client newsletter. There's social media posts. There's a mobile app where you can use AI to write captions for social posts. So there's all kinds of great things. Um, definitely check it out. So you can either, again, just do a website with us, just do our marketing packages, or you can do both. And it, when you have that service, if you send out, like we do a uh, every two weeks, uh, kind of a funny video blog post. Um, and it will send it out across all of the channels. It'll send it out email, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, anything that we connect on it. Um, I'm gonna just show this real quick. First of all, I love the only newsletter you'll actually read. That's so good. But you're talking yeah. about this Cadence Wealth Weekly. Oh yeah. Yeah, so these are videos and you put them up here as blog posts, right? Yep. So you've got the video, you've got the blog itself. Um, and just so everybody knows, it is really great to have the text as well because Google and other search engines can't crawl um, a video the way they would crawl the text on the page. So from an SEO perspective, you want to have the text and the video um, and it will just boost your SEO rankings. But then you can also like, you know, Sean's team has done here quickly embed the video into the blog as well. And these videos are so good. If you if people haven't taken a look at them, they need to check them out. You just are very funny, Sean. Well, thank you. My, <laughs> kids, my kids think so too. Patrick Bolger just said, always great to just call in. The people service input are great. Thank you so much, Patrick. Well, I promise we were going to keep it at just 30 minutes. I'm sure we could talk about this forever. Um, but Sean, thank you so much for trusting FMG with your website and your vision. It came out so incredibly great. I'm sure we'll be featuring it in, in other ways. Um, and, but thank you so much for joining me today to talk about the process and your inspiration. And we are thrilled to... Got, get the chance to work with you. Yeah. Thanks again, Samantha. I love it. All right. Take care. Bye, everybody.